we're having a Christmas party, and I'm doing a real French flourish with a Yule log, a bûche de Noël, with chocolate bark, meringue, mushrooms, powdered sugar, snow. It looks like a real log, and it's just wonderful eating. So come on into the kitchen with me. We're doing bûche de Noël today on The French Chef. <laughs> chef. I'm Julia Child. You know, these French Yule logs, these biches de Noël, when you take off all the mushrooms and the powdered sugar snow and the chocolate bark, what do you end up with? This, just a plain old jelly roll cake. That's really all it is. This is a, a sponge sheet baked in, a, baked in a big pan and rolled up with any kind of frosting you like. And so what we're going to do is to turn this, dress this jelly roll in biche clothing. So we're going to start right now. And for, the, for one of these, just look in any, any good cookbook under biche de Noël or sponge sheet for the, to make the cake and bake it and then roll it up with any kind of frosting that you like. I'm using a chocolate buttercream frosting, and we have the frosting inside. And then, to prepare your, to make everything look log-like, you want to have saw marks on each side, so we cut, make a bias cut. You can see how it's rolled up with a chocolate frosting there, or the chocolate filling, I should say. And then, for even more log-like looks, you want to make a twig, so you just cut a big a little hole in there with a knife. Then you can always eat that little plug, see if it's any good, which it is. And then cut off a piece of your, of this bias that you took off and just stick it in there and then that will eventually be covered with frosting. Now this size is, this is an 11 by 18 inch size and if you want to make an enormous one, you can have two two of these and just join them together. You'd cut them all on the bias. And then when you join that, ugh, a little sticky, you join it together on your serving plate and then when you covered that with the frosting, it would never show where the joints were. And if you had a 12-foot table, you could make 12 of them, which would be rather fancy indeed. We're just going to do one. And so, I'll put this this other one to the side, and we're going to, I'm going to get the serving platter that we're using. I'm just using a, a covered board here. And then, you'll see what this wa uh, wax paper is for later. And then just put the, center this nicely on the board. Then, you're going to decorate right on this board so, so that you won't get the, your board or serving platter messy. Put some wet wax paper all around. And then when you get through with your decorations, you can just pull the wax paper off. And then everything is clean and neat. that up to put it on there. <clears throat> and now, this is a, a buttercream frosting, which is perfectly delicious, I must say. We've done so many of them that I don't have to give you the recipe. And you can frost it in either of two ways. You can just frost it with a little spatula, or you can use a you can use a pastry tube. I'll do I'll do it both ways so you'll see how to do it. Now, we'll start out doing it with the spatula. And I also have something that's very useful for cake decorating, which is one of these little metal Lazy Susans. And you can put the, 
put your cake on there. And then it'll turn around. I've gotten that paper off. Now, I'd better put my glasses on, I think. Now, this chocolate frosting is to look like the bark. This is really very easy to spread on just with a spatula. And then just... And then after you get it all on, you make little marks. I'll frost one side with the spatula and then the other side with the, with the pastry tube. Now here we have our twig. You can just come right up over that. Better have something to hold that with. I think I'll finish off the twig with my, with my pastry bag. So I think it's a little easier. And now, if you're going to use a pastry bag, this is one that has uh, a flat tube with little tooth marks in it, which will look very barky, I think. I always find it easier to put the bag in a, in a measure and then fill it with the frosting using a rubber spatula. There, I guess I'd better put a little bit more in probably. So I've got more log than I think. This is a, a delicious frosting and it makes such a, when you finally get it done, it makes awfully good eating as well as a lovely decoration. Now, here we have our bag. You see, I'm twisting it around with one hand, and the other hand I'm using for squeezing. And it just goes out along in a long ribbon. Now I'll come up over that twig. I rather think I made that twig a little bit too long. I hope not. I think it's, well, I guess that would happen in a forest anyway, things sitting there a long time and when they begin losing their strength. Now I'll turn that around so you can see this other side. Now, if we get underneath here, you can see why it's useful to have this paper on here. Now, there's a little bit here. Then I'm going to scuffle this all up with a knife afterwards. Put some more on this other side. And then, Sort of scuffle it up a little bit so that it looks as barky as you can make it. You can frost the two ends, but I think it looks more, a little bit more like a log seeing those lines around there. There. So I think that twig doesn't look quite as twiggy as it could. Scuffle that up a little bit more. There. Now that's all ready for the for the first stage of it, making it look like making it look barky and foresty, and then we have to have some more decorations for it. So I'm gonna put this into the refrigerator. You want to make, for the kind of frosting that you take any recipe you want, but be sure that you pick one that uh, is soft enough so that you can uh, make the bark design and then also stiff enough so that it can stay out long enough when you're going to serve it. You want it, if it's got too much butter, it's too soft, the frosting may just all fall off uh, when it's on the table, which would be too bad. So I'm going to now put this into the refrigerator, and then we'll go on to the rest of the decorations. And 
we want some other woodsy looking things. And what we're going to do, we're going to make some, have to boil up some sugar to make the, the moss and the mushrooms, which are going to go along with our log. And for, I'm going to make two sugar syrups. One is going to have, it's going to be for the mushrooms, and it has one and a third cups of granulated sugar and a third of a cup of water. And then the other syrup, which is going to be for the moss, is going to have a half a cup of sugar and about a quarter of a cup of water. Now, lots of people, I think, when they know they're going to have to do something that's going to have boiled sugar or caramel, say, oh dear, that's so difficult and I don't think I want to do it. But it's uh, boiling sugar is one of the a terribly easy thing to do, and it's, you can do so many things with it, as you'll see, that it's something you ought to know how to do. And the essential point is that you're, you're going to have sugar and you have water, and then you're going to boil it up, and sugar goes through several stages of boiling. And uh, the important thing is that the sugar, before it really starts in its boil, is completely melted. As you can see, with both of these, the sugar hasn't melted yet, and the liquid is cloudy. And so you want always to get into the habit of never stirring your pan. Always take it by the handle and swirling it around this way, because one of your great problems is, now this one is already boiling, and as you can see, the liquid is clear. And that means that you can go ahead and let it boil. I'm going to change this one over here now, because that heat seems a little bit higher and get this one started boiling and let that boil rather slowly. You see that? You can see clearly the difference between these two. This one is, is clear and this one is not, is not clear. It's still cloudy, so we just have to wait for a moment. It's too bad, bad that I didn't start this, this pan with the less sugar in, that I didn't change pans because I think this one boils up quicker than this one. Well, that's the way life is, and with sugar, you can't hurry it. It just takes its own time. Now, this pan here is beginning to boil up, and we ought to see that it clears fairly quickly. Now, I'm going to change over this pan here, because I'm going to use it later, and I don't want it to boil up too quickly. I'm going to change it over to another burner and put a cover on it and hope that this one is going to hurry up a little bit. You can see it's beginning now to boil. But I've, lots of people have trouble with caramel, and it's usually because this first step they haven't gone through of letting the liquid clear and then letting it boil hard. Now that's coming to the boil. And now can you see now that, that it is clear? That, that's what all this is, this is about, is just to just to show you this that you have to wait for. And then, now that you, we want to boil it to the soft ball stage, and you want to be careful also that you don't get crystals on the side of the pan. So once it started boiling, cover it, and then the steam comes up on the cover and then falls down the sides of the pan and keeps the sugar washed down the sides, and that prevents it from caramelizing. And while that's boiling for a little bit, that can boil for about a minute, I'm going to start my egg whites, because for the mushrooms, we're going to make a meringue. And we want three egg whites. And we'll start them up. And this is, this starts slowly until the egg whites have all gotten mixed up. And then you want to put in a scant quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. And that keeps the egg whites up and prevents them from collapsing after they've been beaten. And also, for a little bit of flavor, we're going to have some, a little pinch of salt with my two fingers. And I'm going to let that go at a moderate speed and take another look at my sugar. That's boiling nicely, but the, the bubbles are, are little bubbles. You can tell it that it hasn't become a syrup yet. And we're going to start testing it in cold water. And if you're going to test it, it's a good idea to put some ice in the water. 
and I'm going to take the cover off and look at it again. Now that's beginning to beginning to look syrupy because the bubbles are heavier and it makes sort of an oily sounding noise as it boils. And at that point, if I can find my glasses, there, you can begin testing with a spoon, being sure not to stir it. See, that looks quite thick and we want to drop a little bit in the water and then put your hand in and see if you can bring up what's called a soft ball. This, it's almost at that stage now. If you're using a thermometer, you would boil it until it was 238 degrees. But I don't always trust a thermometer. I'd rather, if I'm gonna use a thermometer, I always do the testing in water too. Now that's almost it. And then at this point, take it off when you're testing it because it boils up very quickly. See, that, that forms a ball in the fingers and it is soft. So that's your soft ball stage and it's now ready to use. Now see how our egg whites are. And these are supposed to form stiff peaks, which they do. That's why you want to do both the egg whites and the sugar sort of together so that by the time the egg whites are done, the syrup is done. And then very slowly, we pour the syrup in. There's several kinds of meringue. There's one, the usual kind, which is just egg whites with, uh, with plain granulated sugar. And this one is called the Italian meringue with sugar syrup. So I'm gradually beating that in. And this is a particularly nice kind of meringue if you're using, if you're making meringues for decorations. Now that has to beat hard. As you can see the steam coming up there and you're supposed to beat it for about five minutes or so until when you feel the bowl that it is, uh, the bowl is cool. So while that's beating, we'll come over here and look at our, at these little mushrooms that we're gonna make. I'll turn a little bit of, of this heat off here. And I've got to look at this. And I'm gonna put that on low and finish it off later. Now, what these mushrooms are, you see that, that's, that's your mushroom. And what it is are, a little, a large head and a small head, and they're put together. And so that's what we're going to make. And we'll see how that's going. This should, this should actually beat for five minutes, but I'm going to use it as it is anyway, because I think I can show you how it works. And we have, I have here a baking sheet, which has been buttered and then floured, and you want that so that when you put the mushrooms on, they'll come off after baking. So I'm gonna stop that. And again, I'm going to use a pastry bag. You could form these with a spoon. I think that it's much harder to form with a spoon. Now take a look at this lovely, shiny stuff. Isn't that beautiful? And the good thing about this meringue is that you can make a butter cream out of it, and that's what I made the butter cream for the, for the cake frosting and filling. After it's cold, you beat in whatever flavoring you like, like chocolate, and then beat in half of a pound of unsalted butter, and there you have a perfectly delicious frosting. Now here we are with our mushrooms. Take a pastry bag with a small spoon and make some large things for the mushroom tops. Oh, that's leaking out a little bit. Well, and then some little tiny ones for the, for the bottoms. There. And now, this was a small tube that I used on the pastry bag. You could use a, a paper tube if you know how to make them, which is a rather nice trick. And now, these mushrooms 
You bake in a 200 degree oven for about uh, 40 minutes to an hour until they make little soft crackling noises and then they're done. And it's a different meringue than the ordinary meringue in that when you pull it apart, it's fairly hard and it doesn't all squish up and get soft the way the ordinary mushroom does. Now there's your large part and you take a little knife and make a hole in it. And then put some of your, put a little bit of buttercream in or whatever frosting you're using. And then stick the bottom in and there you are, a little mushroom. I'll do another one. That's fun, isn't it? There you are. Now we're ready to, ready to decorate our cake. And we have our mushrooms. Those ones made. And so I'll get the cake out, the log out of the icebox now. Now you can, you can frost the log ahead of time perfectly well. I want to take a look at this uh, caramel that I'm making now to make sure that it's coming along. Because we'll be using that next. So I'm just going to let that boil up while we finish putting the mushrooms around the log. I'll put, we'll put some on the other side. And I'll put some little plain ones around, too. And then now we want to have some powdered sugar snow and some cocoa. This little cocoa makes the mushrooms look a little bit mushroomier. So just put it in a little sieve and then sprinkle it over the mushrooms. That's the more woodsy effect. I guess that looks like fungus growing. And then put a little tiny bit of powdered sugar on for snow, and you can now take off the paper. And you see that has, oh, yep, that has saved the cake. And now we're going to make some moss. And this is that, so that same sugar syrup. Remember, now I'm boiling it down now until it makes a caramel. As you notice, I haven't stirred this at all. I just shake the pan a little bit. I'll go over that meringue for the mushroom again, which was simply one and a third cups of sugar and one third cup of water boiled to 238, or the, or the soft ball stage, and then beaten into three stiffly beaten egg whites, and then beat it until it's cool. And you can make either your mushrooms out of it or your, uh, your buttercream by beating in two sticks of unsalted butter. And now, see, this has turned into caramel now, and we're now going to make some moss. I have some already here, so you'll see what it looks like. And this is on an oiled pole or an oiled broomstick. And I've got paper on the floor. I usually, if I'm doing this, it, usually when I'm doing this, I do it outdoors. And now, you have to wait until your caramel spins a thread. This is some that I've made ahead, and I'm not sure that it's going to work. In other words, you have to cool it off a little bit. This is still a little bit too liquid, but you take a fork and you just wave it up and down over your broomstick. That's still a little bit soft. You just, you just keep on waving it. I mean, it's still a little, a little bit hard. I mean hot. It's got to cool off until it's a fairly thick syrup and you can see when you lift your fork up that it's going to spin a thread. So it's just a matter of, of waving the fork until the, until the thread starts. It's a wonderfully sort of simple-minded and old-fashioned way of making caramel, but I mean making spun sugar, but it works beautifully. 
Well, that's all. Oh, that's just beginning. It's so, you don't believe anything is happening for a while, but then suddenly you begin to see these threads starting. You know, if I do one way over this side where there isn't any, you may see it. You know, they're just a very delicate little thread going up and down. Half a cup probably of sugar probably makes a little more than I, than you need, but it's better, I always think, to have more, too much than too little. There, now that's really beginning to spin. There. But do remember whenever you're doing uh, boiling sugar, just remember that business of being sure that your, your sugar and water have completely dissolved and then you won't have any trouble. And now we're ready to put the moss on the log. See, that just comes off like that. And you'll just arrange it around your log. So I've had a little more at the far end. But there you are, looking very foresty indeed. So I thought, I think that's great, great fun to do. And when you look at these things, I think you very often think that, that you wouldn't be able to do it. But as you see, it's, it's just purely a matter of having some frosting and some meringue and paper on the floor to make your moss with. And uh, I think it's a good idea when you, if when you're making, if you make the moss, because uh, if it's a damp day, it, it can sort of collapse. So it's really better to make it at the last moment. I made it once and put it out on the back porch and then everything completely collapsed and it was rather a mess. So I always make the caramel at the last minute and then put it on. And I think we're now ready to serve this, and we'll go in and look at our Christmas table. Now, this Christmas log will serve about 10 people, and I have here a giant economy size of two logs put together that should serve 20 nicely. So I'm going to serve it. First, I think I'll take a bit of a mushroom off so that this person can have a mushroom. And there is your edible Yule log. And as you, as you cut it down, it, it still looks like a, a Yule log. And it'll keep looking like a log all the way down. And you could serve this with coffee or tea, but we're going to serve it with some champagne, which will be very nice. And so you see the good thing about this Yule log is that after decorating and trimming it, you can sit down and eat it, too. And that's more than you can say for a Christmas tree. That's all for today on The French Chef. This is Julia Child. Merry Christmas and bon appétit. Julia Child is co-author of the book Mastering the Art of French Cooking.